Hello everyone and welcome along for the final time for the final race of the squad sprint season. Round number eight takes us to Yas Marina Circuit here in Abu Dhabi. A traditional finale on the Formula One calendar and it is the same here with squad sprint. I'm Ginger Andy and joining me for one last time we've got George Morgan. 15 laps ahead, what do you expect George? Oh, I don't know. Last chance to dance, uh, Andy. Certainly question marks across the board. Fixed setups here. One stop mandatory, soft tire mandatory as standard. Really sad that this is coming to the last race of the season, but it's been a corker. Looking forward to some last minute action. Yep, hopefully we'll have one last hurrah. The Drivers' Championship already decided. The team's yet to be called. It's Mercedes versus McLaren. Mercedes have a 49-point gap with 59 points available. McLaren will need some race to try and overhaul them. Let's have a look at the starting grid, starting from pole position. It's Louis Delatraz for the All-Stars. Alex Gillen lines up second. And Chelen bollock Bassi makes a late return in third. Niren starts fourth with Arav in fifth. And sixth position is Steve Brown. Seventh in the grid for Veloci, it's Maxime Byman. Eighth is Hayden. Gallus. Ninth is Tom Martinez and rounding out the top ten is Danny Beresnay. Yeah, the bottom half shows Simon Weigang starts from the pit lane. Yashish Manoha representing Yas Heat P12. His teammate Yaroslav Honzik P13. Eamon Murphy P14. Ben Daly for McLaren P15. Emily Jones for McLaren P16. Teammate James Baldwin P17. Danny Moreno for Mercedes P18. You have Bono Huiz P19 for Mercedes as well as his teammate Jano Watmir P20. Well, as you mentioned there, Simon Weigang starting from the pit lane. He was late to the grid. And of course, some driver transfers this week. Shembolic Bassi jumps in for his debut in season three and the final race in for Thibaut Courtois. Yishish Manohar is back in for Andrea Kaposha. And Alpha are two legged. No James Doherty here for the final round tonight. But of course, we do have a constructors championship to decide, George, don't we? Mercedes versus McLaren, 49 points in it. Mercedes strong favourites. Absolutely. I've got to say, all guns blazing. But certainly, McLaren Shadow have not been without their chances. They're certainly still within this fight, especially after James. James Baldwin secured the title last week in the driver's standings, but uh, Yassit out by a single point, Andy. Therefore, we have this pretty much a match race for the championship in this race. Yeah, you're absolutely right then. The cars are on the grid then. For the final time this season, we are go in squad sprint and the run down to turn one begins between Louis Delatraz and Alex Gillen. It's a good start from Alex Gillen and he's ahead going into turn one. Delatraz has missed his breaking point and gone way off the track, but here he is rejoining the circuit and rejoining at the helm of the field as they sweep their way down the hill towards the end of that first sector. It's still one, two, three for the All-Stars. Into the breaking zone and look at that. Was that a quadrant car shooting straight through the runoff area? and making, on, making up their own track layout. I think it might have been Arava actually. A few cars off in the end field. I think it was a Yassi and a Mercedes. And look, it is Arav. He's uh, decided to make up his own racetrack and he storms into the lead charge. Incredible. Well, you can't buy quality like that, Andy. I've got to say, incredible stuff from Arava. Very interesting developments here, of course, on the straight as well as we're now witnessing what looks to be a battle going down towards the next left hander. We're just seeing, uh, indeed, it looks like Tom Martinez, I believe, there in the blue. And, uh, sorry, the green, sorry, what is it in blue for? But in the blue Veloce car on the outset as well. Niran Yusufa with a phenomenal overtake there. And Maxime Byman trying to hold off the attack from the Veloce car, heading down towards the next left hander. And there you can see them going wheel to wheel. Niran Yusufa. Ufu defending down the inside as we're now viewing uh, it's certainly what seems to be Tom Martinez coming out of this section here's Maxime Byman oh. rear wing camera as uh, we're just seeing what looks to be I think that was a Yassin car there going for a spin and taking out as well I think just tapping the Alfa Romeo car sensational stuff on lap one Andy Absolute mayhem as usual in the squad sprint. Oh, who's that? That's one of the Yassi round and a Mercedes round as well Absolute chaos then I think that was uh uh, Manohar going off and then Hornsick spinning around Bono Huis. Absolute mayhem then on this opening lap as we watch Maxime Bymans make her way through the final couple of corners. But out in front at the start of lap two, it's out of making up his own track layout. And I'm pretty sure that will create a lot of animosity in the comments section. Let us know, folks, what do you think about Arif's uh, interesting lines through um, the opening parts of the lap. But anyway, he's been reeled in now by Louis Delatraz, a racing driver, of course, and he's hunting down Arif and trying to make him pay for that interesting line he took through that first lap then. So it's Arif in the lead, Delatraz second, Gillen is third, and Bollock Bassi running in fourth. He's won before, of course, in squad sprint as Chen Bollock Bassi, but it's his first appearance in season three. Let's see what he can do 
on his first appearance in the series. But it's Arav leading Deltra second and Gillen in third as they all fan their way out down the street. And here we go, Tom Martinez down the inside on Brown and looks like he's got that one done. Yes, Martinez up the inside on Steve Brown into the breaking zone and he's through and up into fifth place, George. Yeah, nice and comprehensive. Meanwhile, three wide down here as well. Hayden Gallis down in between what seems to be a Yassi car as well in behind the Mercedes. I believe a Bonu Huis as well who creeps past Hayden Gallis. And that's two for the price of one indeed coming out down towards this straight now. But don't count out Gallis. He's right in the slipstream of, of Bonu Huis. He might get a chance as well. In comes uh, what looks to be the Yassi car of Yashish Manohar. Just having a little tap there from Bono as well as they run the next left hand. They're still they're running in tandem, but uh, nothing. And Campanella. I believe there's another car off as well. That's Emily Jones and the McLaren car off the track. Not ideal at all. Remember, McLaren looking to go for the title here in terms of the constructors. They need every car possible in that top 10, Andy. Yeah, it's an absolute disaster for McLaren. Jones down in 18th, Baldwin 17th. Very little progress being made by the McLaren cars. I suppose their only saving grace at this stage is the Mercedes are only 13th, 15th and 16th. So it's still game on, but you've got to say McLaren, Shadow, if Mercedes not doing so well, this was an opportunity. Wow, that's a big moment for Adam. He's off. He's way off. He's into the infield section and he just about, oh, I thought he was going to keep it out of the wall. He didn't. And uh, well, it's constructive. Lines have taken another twist. That's a completely different line down that street. Across the grass, off the runoff, and he's uh, having a bit of a nightmare out there, Arav, and he's now dropped behind Steve Brown, and I suppose Karma comes at you quickly, and he drops down the order into sixth place for Quadrant, and Quadrant and their usual run at the front doesn't last very long, but that was a very interesting moment there for Arav. Off onto the grass, frightening stuff. But he rejoins in sixth position as we now watch Bono Huis try and make some progress for that Mercedes team. They need all the points they can get. Up behind Yeshish Manohar who returns to the series this week. He's going down the outside as Bono Huis. Can he sweep through? It looks like he can. Lovely move from Bono Huis. Manohar will try his best to come back on the exit. Gets that little bit of a run and now he'll tuck in behind that Mercedes if he can and try and get a move done down the street. Waving left and right is Bono Huis. Manohar now on the outside. Huis on the inside. Can Manohar do to Huis what happened? a few quarters ago. No, he can't. Huis gets it done and he's surely through now. No, he's not. Manohar still fighting it hard. And right on the curb there. Can't quite get through and Huis holds on. Great stuff there between the pair, George. Yeah, exquisite stuff. You have to say, Manoha utilising that steering wheel. It was like he was on the circuit of the Extreme E off-road tracks. You see him there fiddling about with a wheel on the curb there. Got really risky, I have to say. Now you can see Jana Watmir, of course. Uh, he came back uh, after dispatching Danny Moreno, and now he's hot on the tail of Yashish Manoha. So he's inadvertently managed to squeeze himself in between two Mercedes cars. That's going to be a lot of pressure there for certainly Yashish Manoha. And uh, as we head our way into lap 4 of 15, it's going to be extremely interesting as we're now witnessing what looks to be Yaroslav Honzik closing up on Niran Yusufu who is in P7 driving a spectacular race it has to be said we see them pull off some incredible maneuvers certainly on Maxime Byman now he's gonna have to try and defend from Yaroslav Honzik but gets squeezed out slightly there Honzik does the business comes down and makes his way towards the next chicane at turn seven and moves himself up a spot and in tandem as well Eamon Murphy comes to join him yeah, those Yassis, they've said it, we've said it all season, haven't we? They were like working together and they like going together in groups. And you know, when you hunt in packs, it works a lot better. And that's exactly what the Yass Heat team do does. And the two of them are through. And now look at this, Murphy up the inside and breaking a lot later than Honzik. That almost looked like a planned move there. And Murphy flies past Honzik and up into seventh position. So maybe Honzik believes that Murphy's the quicker driver at the minute. And they're playing the team game to try and move up in the standing. So now Murphy will set about attacking Daly. And we're now looking from the rear wing of Benjamin Daly, who's having a pretty good race so far. Oh, well, that's an interesting line. <laughs> what is it with these uh, content creators making interesting lines around the racetrack? Do, do you think they'd maybe do this quite often in their uh, career modes, George? Yeah, they sort of seem very well practiced at it, don't they? I mean, we <laughs> yeah. have, to keep, have to keep our eyes on this. Uh, I have to say, uh, it's a good job we're not stewards, Andy. I think we'd be very unpopular after, after this one. But, oh, oh my word! Oh, dear. Um, Benjamin Daly, I think you do the crime, you do the time, oh. and unfortunately he goes off. I have to say, stewards, grab your pens out. It's going to be a long one. Um, certainly, has yes, their paper, their pads are going to be full of notes. Screw it wide there. Yashish Manoha. And uh, I have to say, rejoined very, very early on. I have to say, right on the apex, pretty much. Danny Moreno taken by surprise. And the Spaniard, the machine Danny Moreno, was forced to make a radical adjustment as they come round turn one. Still, Manoha hasn't quite got away yet, but Danny Moreno... Uh, 
uh, enabling his way uh, at least clear of the Asika. But uh, I got to say, Code Brown entering that corner, Andy. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I love how you mentioned the thing about I wouldn't like being assured, and then I had a little think about it, and three corners later I thought, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, because it was absolute mayhem, wasn't it? And, uh, yeah, drama. Oh, you like it? There's even more drama! Round goes, uh, well, that was contact there between one of the Mercedes and I think the Yas Heat car, and it's Moreno that's going backwards as a result, and now Daly's pulling alongside after he was spun a few moments ago. Uh, as we now switch up in front, in front of that to Baldwin, battling side by side with Jano Oppi, I think. Arav in there too, trying to get involved with some of the top drivers in the world of esports. And it looks like he's been eaten up by both Baldwin and Oppi, who for once aren't fighting at the front. They're fighting for ninth and 10th. And uh, it's Baldwin ninth and Oppi 10th with Arava dropping down into P11. Uh, I tell you what, we were briefed before this race started that it wasn't that exciting. I think uh, that's false. This is brilliant, George. Yeah, I've got to say, very different uh, issue on this race, that's for sure, I have to say. We were expecting something, I think, a little bit more sober than this. But uh, I have to say, it's been anything but sober, as we're now watching uh, Bono Huiz now weaving around the track. Now, this is a very important race today, folks. Of course, the constructors standings, as you know, this is very much a team event here at Squad Sprint. And so it, it's very, very clear that all the drivers must do their best for their respective teams. It's a full-on match race today, effectively, between that Mercedes and McLaren. So look at it right now. Who is at the P7 with Delatraz in the pits. Baldwin in P9. His two McLaren teammates down in 14th and 16th. And just look at that. Three Mercedes cars in the top 10, at least for now. That could prove crucial come the end of the race. Yeah, you're absolutely right, George. But you've got to feel for McLaren. What an opportunity. And Mercedes, yes, they're doing okay, but they're not doing as well as they've done in recent races to get into that top 10. And it perhaps was an opportunity for McLaren to pounce today, but it doesn't look like it. That 49-point advantage that Mercedes have looks like getting bigger, if anything. I mean, I suppose a lot of the work has been done by James Baldwin. It has to be said. He's picked up so many victories, and he's won the championship at a canter. And I suppose the, you know, Daly and Jones have just not been able to, you know bring in enough points. Just look at this, Bono Huiz going for another move up the inside of Yaroslav Honzik and he just dives down the inside and makes it work and improves the situation for Mercedes that little bit more by moving up into sixth place. But Yaroslav Honzik, he's a tough cookie. He'll go to the outside. He'll try and go right round the outside of the Dutchman down into the breaking zone. Honzik then against Huiz and Huiz breaks that little bit later, gets the line he wants, gets the track position and is through and up into sixth place. Great racing there from Bono Huiz who's impressed me so far in this race. Oh, he's been absolutely superb, I have to say, and uh, he, he's certainly a huge talent. He's not in esports for no reason, and I have to say, brilliant! It's a little left tap there from Yaroslav Honzik. Now, that's not the first time we've seen him do that, heading around the next right-hander, I have to say. There was a few un uh, unfortunate uh, candidates uh, at that uh, bend on the first lap, I think, that came a cropper uh, in a tangle with Yaroslav Honzik, but uh, I have to say, it just typifies the extraordinary drama that we've had here in this race here at Abu Dhabi. It's been absolutely incredible. Uh, Eamon Murphy who we're currently riding on board with, looking through the rear view mirror, we can see that Steve Brown is, is currently in front of him there. Bono Huis though in behind and uh, I've got to say another position game but Bono Huis is going to prove very valuable in terms of the constructor standings like we've quite rightly talked about as you can now see Chen Bollock Bassi, his first visit to Squad Sprint here today representing Team All Stars and he couldn't get off to a better start really. Well I suppose he could he could be leading this race at this moment in time but his team Alex Gillen is so this will be a good crop of points for All Stars if they he can keep it the way it is right now but just look at Tom Martinez he can gain a lot of straight line speed potentially off the slipstream and could tee up a move heading down the next straight it certainly will open up a few doors for him and don't count out Martinez he is a race winner here at Squad Sprint yeah, well, he's uh, lining it up, going for the move. And we should also mention that All-Stars, uh, with this strong performance at the minute, will hand the wooden spoon back to Team Quadrant. At the start of the season, Quadrant were the side at the bottom. That's why they've been starting in pole so often. But then that was switched around. They got ahead of All-Stars, and All-Stars had been starting on pole. But now, in the final race, it looks like All-Stars are going to jump ahead of Quadrant and demote them back to the bottom of the standing. So, no Courtois, Courtois today. Uh, Bollock Bassi proving to be the super sub. Uh, in this situation. So he's doing a great job and up into second place, but we, we should also mention Alex Gillen. He's, he's been at the front in the opening stages of races so often this season and spun off or made a mistake or been into contact. So, you know, he's going to have to keep it the way it is. And speaking of spinning off, that's Steve Brown going round and dropping the quadrant car down and potentially outside the points paying position. So that's only making things even better for Team All-Stars and getting off the bottom of the order.
Yeah, and also Team Mercedes, who have now dropped up, or certainly popped up another place as well. You've got Otmia now up into P8, Moreno, P9, and I have to say, it looks pretty ominous right now. Baldwin in P7, the only McLaren in the top 10, and that could prove very crucial. Ben Daly down in P11. You've got Emily Jones down in P14, but look at this, Eamon Murphy now coming into the next chicane, and look who's in hot pursuit. Bono Huiz has really closed up a lot of Delta time. Remember, the gap was considerably more than what it is right now as they Around the uh, hairpin bend at turn seven. A great opportunity now for the Black Arrow here uh, upon uh, this Yassi car as they make their way down towards the next uh, series of chicanes and bends. But now we're seeing James Baldwin once again at the mercy of Jana Watmir, the Flying Dutchman, once again having a poke and a prod. These two have had so many titanic battles in the squad sprint this season. It's been truly thrilling to watch. They tangle with the Yassi car of Yaroslav Honzik coming around the next left hander now. Three wide, Mercedes McLaren and Yes, Heat, as they make their way down towards the next few bends, turns 11, 12, and 13. It's going to be Baldwin who takes advantage. Oh, me and not letting him go. The Flying Dutchman, Charisma, in, in full flight, coming around this next left hander. Still Baldwin on top. He lands a blow. P6 for him. Oh, me up to P7. Holzik relegated to P8. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic driving between the trio. And once again, we get a dose of Baldwin versus Altmaier. Baldwin comes out on top in this occasion for the McLaren Shadow. But in terms of the championship, it looks like it's going to be to no avail for the teams. But here comes Tom Martinez. He is coming into the pits for an early stop then on lap 9 out of 15. Gillen still leads this, by the way. Nine laps into this, he's having a fine race with Paul Abassi second and Murphy third as we watch Tom Martinez in the pits and moving away from his box now. Let's see what he can do for Team Veloce as he makes his way out the pits we've got another car in the pit lane there I think that says I don't know it was one of the all-star cars not too sure who it was but uh, out of the pits comes Tom Martinez that lovely little pit lane the unique pit lane where you go underneath the racetrack it's a little bit like Monaco in there isn't it oh that's a big slide for Martinez on the cold tires but he's back out on the track and he's out in clean air and in P11 yeah, he certainly is. And uh, interesting to note as well, Veloce all went for an alternative strategy here today. Uh, medium, uh, well, onto medium softs, in fact. And uh, I have to say, most of the time, we've seen a lot of drivers going for the hard soft strategy all season. But today at Abu Dhabi, for some reason, we've seen three different strategies on offer for the first time, really, in this series, which is absolutely, well, really interesting. And you have to wonder whether um, Veloce, Team Veloce, have a little plan at their sleeve. And uh, I've got to say, All-Stars as well, three separate strategies. You've got Chem Bollock Bassi starting on the mediums, going on to the softs. Alex Gillen, hard to soft. And Louis Delatraz, soft to hard. So that's going to be a very complex uh, um, series of calculations for them to make. We'll soon see how it pays off for them. Of course, currently All-Stars have both their drivers up at the top end. This could be a season's best performance from All-Stars here today. Alex Gillen still on top spot, not troubled at all, only by his teammate Chen Bollock Bassi. And in behind as well, Eamon Murphy, who is currently six seconds behind Bollock Bassi. So let's see how this unfolds towards the end of this race. I don't want to speak too soon, but hats off to Alex Gillen at the moment. I mean, yeah, he's had a, you know, those races where he's ran well at the front, looked consistent and then got a little bit flustered when the others came closing in, but not today. He's having a fine afternoon and running well at the front. Could we be on for a fifth different winner in eight races? Could it be Gillen? Could it be Bollock Bassey? Could it be Murphy? None of those three at the front have won a race this season. As we watch James Baldwin come into the pits for McLaren Shadow, and make a change of tyres and he's back out on his way onto the racetrack. Let's see where he rejoins the track. He's going to be behind Martinez anyway. He's going to be even further down the field than that. He's going to be behind maybe even the likes of Delatraz and Brown. He's going to have to come a long way through the field if he wants to win this one. He's won the most out of anyone this season as we see a quadrant car go off. That's Steve Brown who's had a bit of an awful afternoon it has to be said. He rejoins the racetrack in 12th position. Uh, just a quick note folks. Final race of the season. I'd, I'd like to know what your favourite livery, your, you know, your favourite car to look at this season has been. You know, there's been a lot of work going into designing these car liveries. Uh, George, what's your favourite? Mine's is the Veloce car. Oh, well, I have to say, it's it's a, it's an interesting one. I've got to say, credit to the, the teams because they have truly designed some exceptional cars. Uh, I've got to go, I, this team has stolen my heart this season. I'm a Yas Heat fan, I have to say. <laughs> Big Yas Heat fan. Uh, I've got to say, credit to them, love delivery. And I've got to say, the drivers themselves, true performers this season. They've brought the endurance game to the single-seater series, and it's been absolutely spectacular. And they, they deserve every bit of credit in the book for me. Okay, so uh, we, we agree quite often on the uh, driver of the day, but not on our favourite car. 
scheme. So there you go. Let us know in the comments section. Folks, what's your favourite car design of the season? There's a lot of nice ones out there. The McLaren Shadow, that's another one that I am a big fan of. As we see these three battle for position and down the inside there. Who's that? That's uh, one of the All-Stars. That's Lloyd Delatraz going for a move on the inside of Daly. He's, a, he's in the middle of a McLaren Shadow sandwich at the minute. And now up the inside goes James Baldwin and he squeezes his way through and ahead of Louis Delatraz and up into 11th place. And next up is his teammate Benjamin Daly. As we shuffle up to Tom Martinez running in 4th place at the minute with Bollock Bassey in the pits. This is going to be quite close on pit exit I think between Gillen and Bollock Bassey with Martinez. Looks like Martinez is through and ahead of Alex Gillen. So that's a jump in the stops then for Martinez ahead of Gillen and Bollock Bassey. Yeah, very interesting here, of course, and it does tee up a fascinating encounter towards the end of the race. Just incidentally as well, uh, of course, the two Mercedes cars currently on top spot. Don't forget, Otmir and Moreno, and uh, both of them uh, currently utilising the hard to soft strategy. So they're going to be finishing very quick. Uh, we'll have to see what happens as we get into their pit stop phase. Of course, there's Moreno, who we're currently watching on our screens, P2. Otmir, his teammate, currently not on two seconds ahead, or two and a half, in fact, as they make their way down the stretch. Martinez now in P3. Gillen and Bolabassi, though, they will be right in the mix and in the hunt that's for sure and uh, both of them in fact on soft tyres so let's see if they can utilise the pace maybe lay down a hammer upon Tom Martinez this could be a grandstand finish Andy absolutely it really could be it could be a really interesting one well we had a new winner uh, in the final race of the season you know you just so much for it being a damp squib it's been an absolutely enjoyable race no doubt about it plenty of overtaking out there on the racetrack some drama some interesting moments between the drivers and we could end up with a really exciting finale here so don't go anywhere folks the final race of the squad sprint season is going to be a fantastic finale that's for sure as Moreno and Otmia are making their stops now so let's see where they rejoin and how much ground they've got to make up on fresher tyres but of course they're only going to get three laps to work with that fresh rubber so Martinez should take the lead Gillen will move into second Bollock Bassi third and I would think Baldwin into fourth. Let's see where these two rejoin as the Black Arrows scatter from the pit lane. They certainly do. There you can see the rear wing of Danny Moreno and his teammate Jana Watmir uh, not far behind. Huis has gone ahead of them. And uh, of course, we'll have to see how these soft tyres, how effective they really are towards the end. They're going to need to really start to make an impression on this grid now, on this circuit. And of course, the crucial factor is, is that Otmir now is right on the tail of Louis Delatraz. He needs to be dispatched ASAP. But you have to wonder whether Delatraz might do some team orders here. Maybe hold up the Flying Dutchman, at least for the time being. But we'll have to wait and see. It might prove for not, though, because here comes Otmir on the faster tyre as they come up now onto the inside. And you can see him just weaving down. Dancing across this straight, the Flying Dutchman in P7. Soon he will dispatch, surely the, the all-star car coming down towards the next left-hander. I've got to say, De Delatraz, though, far too experienced to let him go. He's going to try and defend his position. And as they do so, wheel to wheel on the outset, Otmir has done it. Otmir up to P6. Moreno's not far back either. I'm sure he'll be faced with the same task. But there's Alex Gillen, currently just over six, seven tenths of a second, in behind Martinez. It's going to be a real grinder to oh. the end of this race. And Martin is running really, really wide there. Alex Gillen here having, having an absolutely superb race and putting pressure on Tom Martinez, who has been the star of the show this season. The star of this race at the minute is Alex Gillen. And believe it or not, he's reeling the Veloci man in. The man that was contending for this championship earlier in the season, being reeled in by one of the All-Stars. The team, of course, that are bottom of the standings going into this race now have drivers in second, third and seventh in the order. They're having a fine afternoon and Alex Gillen fancies a shot at glory. They're the front five with three laps to go all in your picture on that start finish straight. Will it be Martinez? Will it be Gillen? Will it be Bollock Bassey, Baldwin or Huis? Let's see what a finale we're set up for here, George. Yeah, get your comments in the boxes below, folks. We want to hear from you. And uh, I've got to say, it's going to be really interesting to hear your points of view, that's for sure. Alex Gillen, there in P2, shortly his race of the season. He's been absolutely extraordinary. We've seen on many occasions flashes of brilliance throughout the season. He's led quite a few races, but I've got to say, as we've d deep dived further into several races, he's lost his way. But he's here today, P2, with two laps left. Give him every chance he's got. He will strike a blow on this squad's 
sprint race has been out witnessing Moreno dancing on the inside of Louis Delatraz just as Otmir did earlier on. This time Moreno has the inside line coming into the left-hander and the black arrow does it. He prevails. Surely has the inside line and he will make the most of it but Delatraz fights him back. It got so close but Moreno holding on moves his way over to P7. Three Mercedes cars in tandem. Who is Otmir Moreno? P5, 6 and 7. Amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, there's absolutely no doubt about who's going to be the champions of the teams now, but definitely going to be Mercedes. But who is going to win this race? Because I have got no idea. Seven tenths between Martinez and Gillen. Then Bollock Bassi in third position at the minute with Baldwin hunting them down. The world's fastest gamer. The man that's won three out of the seven races this season. Looking to make it four out of eight and 50%. Can he do that? Let's wait and see. He's ruling them in with Huis right there as well. And he's won a race himself back in Brazil. So they're all closing in with only two laps to go. This is getting very, very, very exciting. But I've got to say, I think uh, Gillen and Bullock Bassi will be happy with De La attempts to slow down Otmir and Moreno, but I don't think it's going to mean much because I don't think Otmir and Moreno are going to get there come the finish. They've just not got enough speed and enough time left to catch up to this group. They're going to run out of laps. So it's Martinez from Alex Gillen, from Shem Bollock Bassi at the minute, with Baldwin trying to close, but I tell you what, he's not closing in James Baldwin as quickly as I suspected he would. Gillen, Bollock Bassi and Martinez have got some really, really, really solid pace out front. They're doing brilliantly. Yeah, and I've got to say, Andy, I spy with my little eye three Mercedes cars in behind up James Baldwin, that's for sure, as they make their way down the stretch. Look at them in tandem. The series of cars, the two all-star cars, these Mercedes cars closing all the time. And I have to say, they might run out of laps, as you quite rightly say, but look at Bonahuis now. He's brought the Delta time gap by half in the last half a lap. It's within nearly three tenths. We're getting closer and closer as we turn into the corner, certainly off these straights. Is it the case that Baldwin's tyres are not seen? the lasting effects to the end of this race. Is it going to be a case that the Mercedes team made the right call to jump onto the quicker tyre? They might they might actually do it here. They might overtake Baldwin, the world's fastest gamer, at the mercy under the Mercedes banner right now. I tell you what, they'll be smiling down at All-Stars, won't they? Because all of a sudden, it's not Baldwin that's the threat, it's the guys behind Baldwin. So Baldwin's probably going to hold them up and protect the front three, protect the two All-Stars cars and ensure that it's going to be a battle between those guys unless Huis can do something dramatic on the final lap of this race. We are set up between Martinez, Gillen and Bollock Bassi to the flag potentially here. None of them, well Martinez has won a race, the two All-Star cars haven't even had a sniff. Bollock Bassi's first race this season, George. Yeah, what a race to win. Certainly, he's right in the firing line. And I have to say, we're watching Alex Gillen. Race of the season from Alex Gillen, it has to be said. And uh, he's been there so often, as I, as I said before. But now he's so close to Tom Martinez. Currently, between them is a... It, Nothing separates them. It's thinner than a fly's eyelash right now as we're witnessing the Veloce car now rounding this hempen banner. This is the chance. The slipstream surely will come into effect here for Alex Gillen. And look at this, Chem Bollock Bassi coming to join the fray as well. In tandem, two all star cars, a Veloce car lined up here. Movements in behind as you now see Bonahui sliding up alongside Baldwin. Phenomenal stuff here as we're now rounding up through the next left hander. Here's the view from Yarda Wambier. Bonahui going wheel to wheel with James Baldwin. Chance here for the Flying Dutchman, he goes alongside Baldwin, rear wing tapping as they make their way down the stretch. Still Huis on top, they make their way down towards turn 11. Three wide, heading into the final corner. I said grandstand finish, that's exactly what we're getting. Huis goes through, Ombier goes through. It's a Mercedes switcheroo, McLaren down to P6. Phenomenal racing. Absolutely incredible stuff between them, but look at the leaders, here we go! Oh, here comes Alex Gillen on the attack of Martinez! They've hit each other, they're both off the road! Incredible stuff, and that will allow Bollock Bassi on debut in the season to snatch the lead away in the closing corners of this race! Have you seen anything like it? It's squad sprint, folks! Anything can happen, and right down to the final race, on the final lap, we've got drama! Bollock Bassi, the Turkish driver, into the final corner, steals the victory on the line, unbelievable! All-Stars last and bottom of the standings have come home here with a 1-2 finish and propelled them right off the bottom of the order. Absolutely unbelievable. Bollock Bassi wins. Gillen in second. Martinez third. Wow. Wow.
Absolutely brilliant, Andy. Sensational. Chempolog Bassi first race here on Squad Sprint. And he turns up and takes victory. And they're doing donuts here on the track. There's the three Mercedes cars. They will be champions here. They have won the Constructors Championship of Squad Sprint. Sensational stuff here in the final race of the season. And let's take a look then at the final results from this season's squad sprint. The Yas Marina race, it's Shembolic Bassi who takes the victory then in his first race this season. What a way to start and finish the season for Shembolic Bassi. Alex Gillen finally gets the points. His efforts deserve with second place at 1-2 to lift that team all-stars off the bottom of the order and drop quadrant into the bottom spot. Tom Martinez comes home third, Bono Huis in fourth with Jano Opmir fifth. They did enough to secure Mercedes the Constructors' Championship. James Baldwin only sixth tonight, uh, Danny Bereno in seventh with Yaroslav Honzik eighth, Louis Delatras getting a couple of points in ninth, ensuring that all the All-Stars are in the points and Eamon Murphy rounds out the top 10. Let's have a look at the bottom half of the, sta uh, of the standings from the race then. Yeshish Manohar was 11th, Ben Daly was 12th, Emily Jones home 13th for McLaren Shadow, Maxime Byman was 14th, Hayden Gullis once again pointless in 15th, Steve Brown 16th place, Arav was 17th, Nerin was 18th, Danny Beresney and Simon Vigang failed to see the flag. And the standings, George. Yeah, the top 10 in the Drivers' Championship. Of course, this was all wrapped up last week by James Baldwin. He is your Drivers' Champion. P142 points to his name. McLaren will be well proud of that result. Tom Martinez uh, representing Veloce, carrying the team all season. P2, 97 points goes to him. Mercedes driver Jana Watmir in P3, 96 points for the... Yes, and of course, the Constructors' Championship then. Uh, how it finally finished in the teams. Mercedes, of course, they had a big margin going into that last race. They extended it further. They ended up champions very comfortably then. Ahead of McLaren Shadow in second. Yassi, who, of course, George was fanboying throughout the season, weren't you, George? 144 points in third. Solid effort from then. Alfa Romeo, they were fourth in the standings on 108. Veloce, a lot of the work done by Tom Martinez on 99 points. All stars with that incredible final week, it has to be said, jumping ahead of Team Quadrant, who will collect the wooden spoon. What a shame for Team Quadrant, Georgie. Oh, I feel sorry for Team Quadrant. I mean, they gave us so many fascinating moments. I think, obviously, we saw some of their, their, their best moments, I think, tonight as well. I've got to say, the way Arava cut that first chicane on the first lap, inspired, Andy, inspired. Yeah, and, uh, well, that wraps it up, George, doesn't it? That's the final race of season three it's been a real joy it's been exciting for us to commentate on it's been enjoyable hopefully for you guys to watch but driver of the day george first of all let's get that out of the way who was it today oh i'm gonna go with chen bollock bassi uh, first uh, first race shows up and gets all stars their first win of the season and i gotta say a little hat tip to alex gillen as well is is driver of the season without a doubt yeah, you've got to, you know, take the words out of your mouth, George, and completely agree. Chambolic Bassi for me, probably would have been Alex Gillen if he hadn't tipped till Martinez round towards the end of the race there in that last lap. So, yeah, I'm going to totally agree with you. But uh, now a little chance for us to reflect. And before we do, remember, you can vote for your driver of the day on the Veloce Esports Twitter account. But now a chance for ourselves, ourselves to reflect. And uh, we all want to know what you guys think as well about this. What was your moment of this season? Everyone, let us know. Reminisce back. But George, I think we both know what our moment of the season was, don't we? It's got to be that battle at Turkey between the two heavyweights, Jarno Watmir and James Baldwin, isn't it? Oh, classic. Absolute classic. And I do implore, if you have not seen it or you've missed it, where have you been? Go back and watch it. It was absolutely mental. You had the world's fastest gamer against the Flying Dutchman. And I have to say, I I've watched it back a few times now and I, I, I tell you, you what it's it's incredible yeah i'm, I'm surprised I've, I've looked on twitter and not seen any titanic music in the background yet either george it's incredible <laughs> <laughs> but i suppose on that note it's time to end then it's been a real joy we've enjoyed the series throughout i hope you guys have too but season three of squad sprint is over congratulations to mercedes the team's champions and congratulations to james baldwin who won the driver's title that's all from us goodbye <laughs>